Hello YouTube friends. I've got an organised, an organising kind of day planned. Uh, next month Agnes, my granddaughter, will be two. I'm so surprised. I'd be more understanding of that if I was saying that she was going to be one. But she's going to be two next month and I've got a few things planned for her birthday. And one of the things I want to do is make her a chalkboard. That'll be fun, won't it? I was at Ikea the other day and I found these chalks, which are nice big chunky chalks in uh, uh, all the lovely chalky colours. And so I thought that I would make her a chalkboard. I've just measured where I think it might go. I think I'd like it to be something that we could use outside if it was beautiful weather or inside if it wasn't so great. And so that means using, uh, I think, I'm going to ask the people at the uh, wood merchants this morning about using an exterior grade plywood. And then I need to get the right primer for it and then the right blackboard paint. And also another couple of brushes because I am bad at cleaning brushes. I really am. And so they, they do tend to be single use, my brushes. I've got to get better at that because it turns out to be quite expensive to buy a new brush every time you start a new project. So I'm going to pop into town now, uh, take you with me. And we're going to go and have a look at the builder's merchants where the wood yard is. And uh, I've got a couple of projects I want to do that are made of wood, but I definitely want to make a start with this one. Now, I'd quite like it to be a big chalkboard, but it has to fit in my car. It also has to fit possibly where the space it would be. It doesn't matter, I guess, what size it is, because we can prop it up anywhere. I don't know. I'm going to get the wood and uh, see where we go from there. Now, because I've pinned back up uh, Agnes's quilt and I've started to design some more of it. So we'll have a little look at that. But for now, it's a really, really beautiful day. And I'll just tell you that um, the hen run, uh, where the hens live, has all been pecked bare over the summer. And basically they were just relying on me feeding them and whatever bits and pieces they could scrub up from the bare earth. And so the garden's pretty much finished now. So I opened the gate from the hen run and the hens are all in the garden now. And then I looked across the fence at the goose and I thought, well, that's not very fair, really, because the goose is just in a great big field of nettles. So I'll let her out as well. So the goose is now in the garden. She's eaten all my courgette plants, but they were pretty much over anyway, because as soon as the first frost comes, which won't be for a while, because I think our weather forecast is for quite nice weather. But anyway, I thought, what? let's balance this up. A few courgettes or a happy goose. I went for the happy goose in the end. And so she's out there now, just pretty much lying in the middle of the courgette patch. But what she doesn't know is I've got two more courgette plants in the polytunnel, which she hasn't got because the door's shut. So I can have courgettes if I want them. But the reason why I'm telling you this is uh, one of the reasons to keep the goose out of the garden, apart from the fact that she's very, very fierce. I mean, she's fine with me, but nobody else better venture into the garden. She's a good guard dog like that. But she's very, very messy. A goose's diet is 90% grass. It processes through the goose and comes out the other end as a pretty evil smelling, nasty deposit everywhere. And so I want to be able to go out into the pavilion, go out onto the terrace uh, without having to stand in all of this stuff. So I bought this. It's a pressure washer. The hose pipe is right by the back door, so that will fit in nicely. The electrics are also by the back door, so I should be able to pressure wash the terrace down and also into the pavilion uh, just to get rid of that, um, those deposits that my girls are leaving me. But I'm just realising now, I bought this online and if I'd bought this from a shop, it would have come ready assembled. And here it is in kit form. Now, sometimes you guys say to me, is there anything you can't do, Kate? This is the kind of thing I can't do. 
I look at a box full of bits and pieces like this and an instruction manual like this and all the bits of handle and all of that and I just want to find somebody else to put it together for me. So I'm disappointed that I didn't buy this ready assembled. I might have to RTB, read the book and see if I can put it together myself. But I'm not going to do that now. For now that can stay in the box. My main concern at the moment is getting a chalkboard and doing all the layers of paint on there so that I think you know it's going to need two or three layers of blackboard paint to make it nice and robust and um, that's my main priority at the moment. It's, it's four weeks or so off Agnes's birthday so we're, we've got plenty of time, famous last word. It's going to be a very handmade birthday, her second birthday. It really is. So let's go to town, shall we? Uh, we'll go and f buy this wood. That's what I'm going to do next. So come with me. It's a blue bead sort of a day. I've got my blue dress on. I'm going to be working on Agnes's quilt later, which is why I made these beads, because they look just like her quilt. It's on the board. We're going to be doing some more watercolour painting with fabric. Painting a blackboard, maybe if I manage to buy it today. Assembling a pressure washer. In order of priority, that's at the bottom of the list. But in order of priority, should be at the top of the list really, because the terrace is looking pretty messy. Let's go to town. Board. I had a look in the shed this morning and I've got some primer and I also found a brush that wasn't too bad but I've been thinking as I've been driving along that I might get a little roller because rolling the blackboard paint on that might give it a better finish whatever I'm going to go first of all and talk to them about uh, this exterior ply that I might need and see if we can fit it in the car and all of that and I'm walking down now to the right place to get the uh the guy to talk to me about the plywood. It's a great builder's merchant, this one. It's got everything you could possibly imagine in all sorts of different sizes. And they're really friendly as well. Um, and it might be, I guess, that we can get this off an off cut. Um, and the guy's coming now and he's going to be wondering why I'm talking to myself. So I'll explain. Hi, love. I'm not talking to myself. No, don't you worry. Okay, I'm just doing a bit of filming. Um, how cool are you with me filming this? Uh, yeah, no problem. And so, um, okay, so I was just explaining to the other guy, I want to make a chalkboard for my granddaughter for her right, birthday. Right, okay, yeah. And um, exterior ply. Exterior, yes. Uh, because it, it, it's probably going to be outside, especially on the, in the summer. Yeah. But, um, and I measured it, but if we can do this from an offcut, it doesn't really matter too what much about the size. size. Is, let's see, what well, the size that I came up with was one meter by one meter twenty-five. What kind of thickness are you looking at? Oh, it doesn't. Uh, does that matter? Um, well, if it's exterior, I think you'd probably be best off maybe looking at a twelve or an eighteen mil. Up to you. You make I'll that show, decision. I'll show you both of what we've got. Because if an, um, if we've got a if we've got an offcut, I mean that's 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 your twelve mil. Which I think. That's probably about kind of and that's enough. exterior grade. That's exterior, yes. Yeah. That'll do, won't it? Yeah. That's perfect, actually. What, think, kind, of, what kind of sizes was it again? Sorry. Well, I did measure a space where it might go this morning, and it was one meter right. by one meter twenty-five. By one meter twenty-five. But that doesn't really matter. That was just. Yeah, well, I, was, I mean, this this is um, just short of eight hundred. Yeah. Uh, well, be one one twenty, I reckon. Well, we can do plenty of chalking yeah, on one, that. Yeah, one twenty. I think that would be perfect. And you say twelve mil? Twelve mil, yes. That's going to be around round about perfect. Yeah. Okay, sold. Sold. And, and that will go in my car as well, because my big yeah. worry was that I wasn't going to be able to get it in my car. But yeah. I'll go in the car. That's no problem. Okay. And now I'm just going to go down to the bottom bit now and buy some blackboard paint. Yes. Straight um, up in the showroom. Yeah, in the yeah. showroom. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? So, I'm Kate. What's your name? My name's Mac. Mac. So, this is Mac. If ever anybody is around about this area and needs any wood, come here. Mac will sort you out. Happy days. Okay, happy days. It's going to be here somewhere. Here. 
There it is. Okay, blackboard paint. I don't need a huge one, do I? I do. And it's. Uh, yeah, I think that'll be fine. There we go. Paint, rollers, tray, wood. Bingo. But I'm not going to come all this way and just do one thing. So I've got a few more things I'm going to do. Um, multitasking. Here we go. So one of the things I want to try and do is uh, I have my scissors with me, my lovely, my best fabric scissors, Kai scissors, Japanese. But there's a problem with them. Now, I need them sharpening, I think. I haven't been down the road I'm about to go down since before the pandemic. A couple of years since I went to visit this guy, but there's a shop here that I'm really hoping uh, he's still open. And he is one of those fantastic guys who mends shoes, cuts keys, sharpens knives, sharpen scissors so I'm going really hoping that he's still open so I'm going to go now and I always find it a bit weird filming in public so I'll I'll let you know uh, whether he's open or not and I'm going to take my scissors to try and get them sharpened I just got here and he's open Derek's shoe bar let's go in and see if he can um, sort out my scissors well Derek was still open and happy to sharpen my scissors. He said they'll be ready tomorrow, but I'm not coming back into town. I just come into town when there's several jobs to do at the same time, but that's great. He's gonna sharpen my scissors for me. Now, I've got another couple of jobs to do, but before I get on with that, I just thought I'd come and sit in the park. Uh, I'm in the, you can't see it. It's just behind those big trees there, but there's Hexham Abbey. Um, and I've just come through the marketplace. There's a lot of people around and I don't really feel like wandering around pointing a camera at everybody. <laughs> so I'm just going to sit for a few moments and enjoy the park. It's really beautiful here. Big, big mature trees and lots and lots of flowers. And I like to think about what this place would have been like when the Abbey was first built and there were no cars and there were all these beautiful old buildings and all the people going about their day-to-day -day lives i did a, a few years ago i did a tour around hexham abbey it wasn't a particularly good video i have to say i'd really like to redo that video again uh, and film it on this better camera because this camera is much better quality uh, and also film it um, with somebody who knows what they're talking about. And so I hesitate to say that I'll leave a link in the end uh, card to that video because it wasn't terribly good. <laughs> but I'm going now to see uh, my printer now, uh, who's in, in, in Hexham, just down the bottom of the town there. Uh, there's a few things I need to talk to her about. I'm going to take these in now. And I'm going to paint in the pavilion because it's such a beautiful day um, I seem to be doing rather a lot of painting lately pink painting now blackboard painting but I'm going to take this and this and this oh, just a minute and this That worked okay. I'm going to take them into the pavilion, but I'm going to get changed because I don't want to get blackboard paint. Well, I'm going to prime it first of all, and then um, blackboard paint it. But because it's such a beautiful day, and it's a beautiful day, it's about 26 degrees, the car thermometer says, I think I might just spend a few minutes, I'll get togged up and I'll go and look at the bees. Uh, because I've been waiting for a day like this so that I can go in and have a quick look at the bees, see how they're doing and maybe get just a little bit of honey for this year for my kids and I. So I'll take these things through to paint 
but then I'm going to uh, quickly do that. It's hard to film that one, uh, but um, it won't take me long. I'm only going to be about a quarter of an hour. I don't want to do a full inspection. I'll just uh, uh, quickly go and see if they've got any spare honey for me. Let's see if that works. Well, that's all I want It's just a little bit of honey I'll show you, we'll go in the pavilion and we'll have a look at it When it's warm like this, really warm It's quite a good idea not to use smoke But to use water I've got one piece of honeycomb She's full of beautiful capped honey and that'll do I'm going to leave the rest for them because they've worked really, really, really hard to get it. I sometimes see beekeepers because I watch beekeeping YouTubes and so on. I sometimes see beekeepers uh, without um, protection without gloves and veil and hats and um, for me I feel a lot more confident there's a bee buzzing around now which is why I'm still talking to you through this thing I'll let that settle down I feel a lot more confident going into the bees if I am fully um, covered up like I am now it's just one bee but it only takes one bee to sting you and so I don't know with, whether it's um, confidence or the type of bees I've got lovely relaxed bees if that's the thing I mean they're still a bit mad at me because I'm stealing their honey only the smallest amount you saw how much I took one of their many 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 combs many combs and they've got enough there to keep them going throughout the whole winter which is what I need them to have so that I don't have to worry about feeding them extra sugar syrup sorry <laughs> it's hard won, very hard won indeed and so uh, you saw I took, I'll show you, I'm going to put it into jars later and um, there's just one bee buzzing around <laughs> uh, telling me off the rest of it will be for them all winter long and I know that they'll be alright and they'll come through the other end and they'll be alright and there's just one little bee who won't, who's very angry who won't let me forget what I just did Sorry bees, they are marvellous things aren't they? I hope you saw a little bit of what I was doing there I bet it was only a little bit Right, I'm going to go and get changed and uh, bring the wood out here There's some fantastic apples growing on the trees here well, and that's the other thing I wanted to check is what the elderberries are doing because I'm going to make elderberry vodka again this year Why wouldn't you? But they're still green I can see so we'll wait a few weeks to do that. Okay, I'm gonna go and, um, is that okay, Cat? Yes, it is, she says it is. See you in a minute. I'm gonna set up to paint in the pavilion, but everywhere you look, I'm surrounded by poultry and goose. Come on, Eileen, off you go. Good girl, good girl. It's such a clumsy shape to carry. Primer. So when I brought this in from the car, I left both the gates open, the gate to the track and the gate to the lake. And so if Eileen remembers, 
she can take herself up for a sneaky swim. Oh, this the roller's nice. And so then I think if Eileen hasn't taken herself up for a swim on her own, which is unlikely, I'll definitely make her go for one because it's such a beautiful evening. Oh, there's the goose, right there. Okay, well, let's see if we can chase her up to the, to the lake when I finish this first coat. Because I won't be doing another coat till tomorrow. No paint on cake just yet. Okay, primer. First coat of primer on. I think it only needs one coat of primer. We can start away with the blackboard paint when I've done the other side. Because I'm going to do both sides, why not? Okay, where's the goose? There she is. Okay, that's good enough for me. Lid on, and then I'm going to wash this. I am, I really am. She doesn't know what's good for her, does she? Because at the top of here, there's a lovely swim. She knows how to walk back down again. Good girl. Up you go. That's it. Now don't turn left, turn right. Turn right. Turn right. That's right. Good girl. Through the gate we go. No, no. Turn right. Oh, no. I need you to turn right, Eileen. Not left. Okay, well I'll shut this gate then. You're not worried about the cat. Up you go. Go on, up you go. Good girl, you know the way now. Yes, she knows where she's going now. Oh, good girl. In you go. Silly goose. I'll show you what I did with that honey. I cut off the best bits of capped honey and put them into jars. And there was just enough for these four jars here. This one, which one? Yeah, this one's just loads of cut up bits. I'll have that one. But the other four are good. 
the other three. The other three are good. And with the rest of it, I put it all the bits and pieces of cappings. I put I put them into this sieve and cut them all up with a knife. And what I'll do with these cappings is I'll feed them back to the bees. So I'll just put them in a shallow tray and put them on top or next to the beehive and they'll come out and they'll collect, they'll clean it all off, they'll collect all the honey that's left over on there uh, and um, they'll deal with that. And then with this honey that's in here, I'm going to top these jars up. And if there isn't quite enough, then I won't have any. I'll make sure my kids have got it. One for each of my kids and some scraps for me. And a spoon to lick now. Mm. Very, very, very good. Well, there's nothing I'd like better now than to do some fabric watercolour painting on this behind me. I actually have started a little here. Just that's the sewn edge there. And I've just started to put a few little pieces on. Normal pieces are in here. But I think you saw outside when I was painting that the more urgent thing is to clean the areas where I walk. And so I'm going to try and put this together. It may take me some time.
I only got it to work after I watched a YouTube video. That's how important YouTube is. But now I can't stop cleaning things. It's absolutely wonderful. It's good for weeding between the cracks too. These candles here are this month's shop update for um, September. They're beautiful um, variegated candles with autumn colours. They're over there in the shop now. If you're on the mailing list, you'll have got an email telling you about these. And also, if you're on the mailing list, you might win a pair. In fact, I've decided I'm going to uh, have two winners on the mailing list uh, because these candles are so beautiful. I ordered loads and so there's going to be plenty in the shop for the whole of autumn. So pop along and have a look. There's the honey look, all beautifully uh, settling in its jars there. And that lovely bunch of autumn flowers that my daughter gave to me from her allotment. Thank you for watching today and I'll see you again next week.